Um, so, <laughs> provincial assessment. So I'm in test this point of view because um, that's uh, the only way I can get something that resembles a real student, um, especially for my open math. This is actually a real student to my open math. So let me just uh, do the problem set to assessment as this test student. Um, he already used two lay passes for problem set two. <laughs> so now I'm going to read in one lay pass so that I can actually do problem set to assessment. And when I do it, so this is the screen you get. And with the assessment, I do want you to kind of uh, don't think of it as having unlimited attempts. I mean, you can do it multiple attempts, especially if there's uh, technical issues, but um, it's manually graded, and I'm only going to grade your last attempt. I'm not going to grade your best attempt. I'm not going to grade all of them. <laughs> so only retake it if uh, you recognize you had some technical issue. So when you start it, you get one of your homework questions. And do I want to do this? I don't want to, because this is one of the questions I already did at the last uh, virtual class session. So I... I guess I can just uh, type in the numbers in a calculator. So um, the constant uh, volume, I think I finally remember Boltzmann constant. I think it's a 1.381 times 10 to the power of, I want to say 23. Oh, sorry, it, uh, yeah, um, I did something. Thank you for catching that. Um, let me reshare so that uh, it's not blurry. Uh, sorry, I did something <laughs> before the session started that, okay. Uh, is it screen now sharp? Yes. Yeah, minus, yeah, minus 23, thank you. <laughs> Fortunately, this portion of video is not something that I would reuse in a future semester, so. <laughs> okay, so that's Boltzmann's constant. I need that uh, times so for diatomic gases, it's a five and a half uh, NK. So um, that times five half uh, times N, um, nine times 10 to the power of 23. And the temperature change was 20 degrees C, so times 20. Is equal to, okay, uh, 621. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> I had to do both parts together. I can't do one, um, yeah, uh, repeat A for the same number of molecules. Oh, I, yeah, I can just divide it by five and multiply by three. 373, okay. Now, um, so, you know, this might be what you did in homework, and when you submit an end, um, you will just, uh, See that, and um, now this part is the new part. And for you to get full credit, you have to um, you have to add work. And you can do this in multiple formats. You can actually uh, type your work in. So I would say I used uh, the um, the specific heat capacity of ideal gas for constant volume process for diatomic gas, um, C. And uh, this actually allows you to type in mathematical expressions. You can use this. And the syntax for this is under ASCII math. Um, it's uh, something useful for people who are majoring in math and sciences to know. It kind of uses syntax that's similar to LaTeX. No, but you know you're not required to learn it. It's something good to know. Um, so the the specific capacity for constant volume is equal to um, I guess it's per molecule. So I'm gonna say five and a half um, kb. Um, and the the change of temperature you kind of you know that part of another formula, and um, so that's the specific capacity. Um, and the uh, heat input is um, um, Q is equal to C, specific capacity times the number of molecules times a change of temperature. Um, and then I guess with the work, it's up to you how much detail you add. You could uh, tell me all the specific numbers that you entered. 
Um, that is useful when you are, um, especially if you made a numerical uh, input mistake, then I can kind of see clearly, very clearly, um, where you might have made a mistake. But there should be some minimum amount of work here so that I can evaluate your problem solving process. I'm just gonna leave this here so that I'm not um, you know, doing too much work here. Let me take a screenshot for use uh, for a different purpose. So, um, so you know, here I'm demonstrating how you can actually type in your entire work. And um, that's one way to do it. And let me do this, save work and continue. And um, when you have done that, I think the system should let you keep editing the work. Um, yeah, you can still show or attach work. That's the kind of the feature of the show work feature in that it's an input that's uh, separate from your um, assi assessment submission. So, uh, you know, your assessment submission doesn't change. So whatever work you attach here has to be related to the work you did previously. Um, but it, it's uh, separated so that uh, for later when you have a timed assessment, you can, I, I, we, I can separate the part that is timed, which is, you know, entering your answer, and part that isn't timed, which is attaching your work that should be related to the answer that you already entered. And that, you know, allows you to kind of uh, organize your work, rewrite it or whatever, and all of that will be fine when we have timed assessment. Now, if you are writing out mostly what you do, then uh, what you might want to do is maybe take a picture of it and upload it as a file. You can do it a couple different ways. You can actually insert or edit image and then you can, uh, where's the one that I, oh, wait, wait, I didn't save it. One second, I need to actually save this. Uh, let me save it. Yes, yeah, I'll just leave it that way. Yeah, so I can attach an image that way. That's one way to do it. I think there are some size limits. So uh, watch out for any error um, messages and make sure you don't run into that size limit. Um, so that's one way you can save work. Uh, another way you can also attach work. Sorry, that um, scroll bar is really messing me up. Is I think for some, hmm, I don't know if there's a particular file type limitation, but this attach file thing should be another thing that will allow you to attach work. So um, that's another way you can attach your work. I think this will probably work better for PDF. Um, so, so you need to show work. That's the only way you can get full credit on these assessments. So um, when you have submitted it, and I don't know if uh, when you review work, do you see the scores? Oh, you don't. All right. Um, so this is, uh, hmm. do you ever see the scores? That could be interesting. Well, let me, uh, let me try this. So I'm going to go into my open math on my other screen and let me log in as instructor and uh, show you the grading view. We, uh, and I'm gonna pull the window over after I've brought over to the um, test the student's submission so that I don't see anyone else's submission or score. Um, so view score list, uh, test student here. All right, so this is the test student's assessment attempt. And you know, I see the auto graded score and I have full authority to <laughs> override this course. So if I didn't see any work here, I would override these to one so that I think without work, um, if you got all the correct answers, probably the minimum I would give you is two out of five. And depending on the complexity of question, I might even give you three out of five for something as simple as this one. If I don't see any work, it'll have to be two out of five. Uh, I view work. And when I see the work, I mean, so <laughs> I hope you include more detail than this, but if there, if I see that there's enough detail and in case where system grades this as not correct, then I can see where you made a mistake. And if it's something minor, then I would, uh, um, I, I would basically assign the score that I think you deserve um, with the full uh, consideration of everything that's available, including the work. And I'll say something like, uh, good job. And let me just 
pull the screen over and then save changes. Because when I click on save changes, it'll, um, yeah, it goes back to the screen with everything. All right. Um, yeah, so let me refresh here to see what it shows. Yeah, so I guess it never shows what, um, at least within the, <laughs> so you'll have to check for feedback in two different places. Um, there's the, so, um, sorry, this is the complication of LTI integration. Um, there's actually two separate grade books. There's the MyOpenMath grade book. There's the, <laughs> um, there's the Canvas grade book. So within the MyOpenMath grade book, you can see the feedback that I'm leaving. And I think that's the most uh, natural place for me to leave feedback. And um, if you know, there's uh, something more substantial I need to say, you will see me say that here. So, so you should, um, so you should, uh, so the way to access the feedback is through this problem set to assessment itself. Let me kind of do it from scratch under modules. If I go under problem set to assessment, you will see that um, all these screen shows. And within this window, everything here is my open math. So when I click on review work in gradebook, I'm opening my open math gradebook, which will show me all the details of the work and my feedback. Um, now for the grade itself, um, Maybe um, I, you know, in the feedback uh, after this uh, problem set to assessment, I will actually leave a score in the feedback as well, so that you can see it here too. Um, yeah, so I'll do that. But somehow, if I forget to do that, or somehow you want to check it on your own, I'm pretty sure you can see your score within your gradebook. So for test the student, if I scroll down to problem set to assessment. Yeah, I see that it's a five out of five. And that's the score that my open math passed to, um, passed to you. So 